السلام علیکم جی ہسٹری اینڈ سسٹمز آف سائیکالوجی لیکچر نمبر فورٹی ون وی ہیڈ ٹچڈ اپون اے ناول اینڈ اے ڈفرینٹ آئیڈیا ان لیکچر فورٹی آئی ہوپ یو ہیو بین ایبل ٹو ڈسائفر اینڈ انڈرسٹینڈ دی مین تھرسٹ آف دی آئیڈیا Today we are going to touch upon another different and novel idea in the development of psychology in the late 20th century. You won't find these ideas in conventional books of psychology and the history of psychology. Conventional books usually ignore the idea that we talked about in the last lecture. We consider that it is very, very important that you become aware of the main systems and ideas, whether they were within the main conventional stream or not, so long as they left an impact on the development of systems of psychology, we feel that you as undergrads must have some rudimentary, bunyadi, agahi aapko un ideas ke baare mein, un systems ke baare mein zarur honi chahiye. Aur hamari koshish bhi yehi hai ke mukhtalif ideas jo bisvi sadi mein, jinho ne nafsiyat mein ahem makam banaya hai apne liye, ہم اس کا بھی ان کا بھی آپ سے تعارف کراتے جائیں وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ انادر ڈفرینٹ اینڈ ناول آئیڈیا وچ ہیز اے اسپیشل ایپلیکیشن ٹو پاکستان آلسو بٹ بفور وی ٹچ اپ آن دیٹ لیٹ ایس ریویو واٹ وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دا لاسٹ ٹائم اف یو ریمبر دا لاسٹ ٹائم وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ اینٹی سائیکائٹری موومنٹ اینٹی سائیکائٹری موومنٹ اف یو ریمبر was a revolt, a rebellion against some psychiatrists and some mental hospitals and men- mental institutions that misuse biological treatment of mental disorder. Not all psychiatrists across the globe and not all mental institutions across the globe suffer from the problems that anti-psychiatrists rose against, but the anti-psychiatry movement was targeted against or was aimed against those psychiatrists and those mental institutions that have, that had failed <coughs> to under, excuse me, failed to understand the real dynamics in their view, in the, anti, in the view of the anti-psychiatrists, the real dynamics of severe mental diseases and thereby mistreated the patients. Ye movement jo thi, is ki review ke liye, aap ko mein yaad dehani karaun, ke Rosen Haan ne apne kuch colleagues ke saath aur kuch hum khayal logon ke saath milke, they got themselves admitted in various institutions, mental institutions, mental hospitals across the United States and remained there for over two weeks. Kuch log to unme se takriban ek maah tak bhi rahe, lekin kuch log ek maah se kam bhi rahe. Unki aapko yaad hai, amne aapko bataya tha, 
their average stay in the mental hospitals, mental institutions was 19 days. And Rosenhan, Rosenhan found out that as a result of their being admitted, they were branded as schizophrenic only on the basis of their reporting that they heard voices. The rest of the symptoms that they described were not symptoms at all, but exact expression of their practical lives. On the basis of this experiment that Rosenhan and his co-workers, associates carried out, they concluded that mental hospitals are not a place are not places for the treatment of mental disorders, but are really places of cruelty. Mental patients are treated without pity, are subjected to cruelty, and they also found out that 80% of mental patients released from mental institutions go back to mental institutions after having been exposed to the real world. So they concluded that there must be something wrong in the mental institutions and the so-called biological methodologies of treatment. And that was the basis of the anti-psychiatry movement. One of the important, one of the prominent anti-psychiatrists was R.D. Lying, who put forward the view that mental disease is a function of one's existential anxiety, ontological anxiety, ye terms usne istemal ki, that it leads to a division in the self and that division in the self creates schizophrenia, what we call schizophrenia. But then when psychiatrists label a person as somebody who's schizophrenic, then that labeling in itself is damaging. So, what methodology did Lying suggest? Metanoia, if you remember. Metanoia was a mixture of many methodologies which were aimed at changing the mental state of the person, of the patient. And those strategies involved discussion, dialogue, exchange of ideas, and of course, art, painting, in, in addition to painting, music, dance, and things like that. And these were performed, and for these activities to take place, he hired and he set up a place called Kingsley Hall, where all of these could simultaneously involved with, involved, uh, could be practiced, and the patients could be involved in these activities. Kingsley Hall became a very prominent place for the treatment of mental disorders, particularly schizophrenia, which did not use the biological approaches to the treatment of mental disorder, particularly schizophrenia. That was one person we talked about. The other person that we talked about in this regard in the anti-psychiatry movement was Aaron Esterson. And uh, if you remember, Aaron Esterson had based upon his observation, had shown that the family of a person, the people around him, select a person to become a scapegoat. And that selection and scapegoating results in mental disease of a severe kind that we call schizophrenia. Esterson's point of view was, to involve family into the treatment regimen of the schizophrenics. And by doing that, the schizophrenic as well as the family is helped. Ek baat ki maine aap se pishli taraf bhi, jo khas taur pe jiska point maine kiya tha, wo ye hai, that when we talk about family in the European or the North American continental scene, we talk about family which consists of a mother, father and the children. 
Whereas when we talk about family in the context of the subcontinent, then we have an extended family. Here only mother, father and children are not the only family, but others also get involved because we live together, we operate together, we function together. The grandparents, parents, children, cousins, all living in, under a same setup. So in our case, the, there is this extended family. So if we are looking and trying to understand the impact of family in the creation of schizophrenia or mental disease, as Esterson has pointed out, he is talking about family only in terms of mother, father, and the siblings. But when we look at from the context of the subcontinental point of view, subcontinental family, then our family is a larger one. So we have to see that difference that our family impacts the patient probably more than the family that is Esterson is talking about. इस रेफरेंस में मैं एक और आपसे जिक्र करना चाहूंगा जो मैं समझता हूं जाति तौर पे मैं समझता हूं बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट बात है आज से चंद बरस पहले वी अंडरटुक ए रिसर्च ऑन द इंपैक्ट ऑफ मेंटल डिसऑर्डर इन द सिटी ऑफ लाहौर दैट इज ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सिटी इन पाकिस्तान City of Lahore was divided into various various subsectors, and researchers were sent all across the city. The idea was to find out the incidence of mental disease in the city, and what did we discover? Among other things, I don't want you to be burdened about other things, but in this particular context, we discovered in that research that. those households where family members are more had showed a greater incidence of mental ill health as compared to those households where the family members were small in number un gharano mein jahan par zyada log the फैमिलियों की फैमिली मेंबर्स की तादाद ज्यादा थी वहां जहनी अमराज की तादाद भी जहनी अमराज की मकदार भी क्वांटम भी ज्यादा था और वो घराने जहां फैमिली मेंबर्स कम थे वहां जहनी अमराज की तादाद और इंसिडेंस भी कम था दैट रिसर्च हैज बिन पब्लिश एंड हैज बिन प्रेजेंटेड इन ए नंबर ऑफ इंटरनेशनल फोरम्स so what asterson is saying is probably right in view of the research that we undertook in pakistan in lahore showing that family impacts mental disorder asterson was not too wrong let us go forward of the anti psychiatry and let us take a look at another different but an interesting point of view in the development of psychology a different system that emerged us system ko samajhne ke liye hame thodi si background mein jana padega we are talking about psychology in the third world countries now what are the third world countries third world countries are usually considered those countries that were colonized or that were a part of other countries and that became autonomous or independent after the second world war 1945 ke baad aap jante hain ki april may 1945 mein europe mein jang khatam ho gayi thi और आप जानते हैं कि अगस्त 1945 में एटम बम गिरने के बाद जापान ने भी सरेंडर किया था और इसलिए पैसिफिक में भी दूसरी जंग अजीम जो है 
وہ اختتام پذیر ہوئی تھی تو دوسری جنگ عظیم کے بعد اپریل مئی یورپ میں اور اگست میں جاپان میں دوسری جنگ سن انیس سو پینتالیس میں جنگ دوسری جنگ عظیم کا خاتمہ ہوا دوسری جنگ عظیم کے بعد جو ملک آزاد ہوئے ہیں ان ممالک کو ان ملکوں کو عام طور پر تھرڈ ورلڈ کنٹریز کہا جاتا ہے یہ تھرڈ ورلڈ کنٹریز کیا ہیں یہ وہ ممالک ہیں جن پہ کالونائزرز نے امیرکنز نے یا یورپین ممالک نے کسی نہ کسی حد تک قبضہ کر رکھا تھا جیسے آپ جانتے ہیں کہ انڈیا پاکستان کا جو بر صغیر ہے دی انڈو پاک سب کانٹیننٹ واز کالونائزڈ واز ٹیکن اوور واز انڈر دی رول آف دی برٹش کراؤن اینڈ دے میڈ لاز اینڈ دے رین دی مین فنکشنز اینڈ لاز ان دس کنٹری سملرلی دے ور ادر کنٹریز دیٹ ور انڈر دی یوگ آف واٹ از کالڈ کلونیلزم یو نو دیٹ پریکٹیکلی آل آف ایفریکا واز انڈر دی یوگ اور دی انفلوئنس آف دی یورپین کلونیل پاورز یو نو اف یو ڈونٹ ویل ہیئر اٹ از یو نو نو وی نو دیٹ دی فار ایسٹرن کنٹریز سچ ایز انڈونیشیا ور انڈر دی یوگ آف دی کلونیل پاورز And of course, on top of everything else, you also know or you should know that China, what we know as China, People's Republic of China now, was under the influence of the colonial powers, that is America, that is England, that is France, and that is Japan. In Mamalik ke, ye pura ka pura China jo hai, ye is ki ek ان ممالک کی ایک کالونی تھی تو اس طرح سے ایشیا اور افریقہ کے بہت سے ممالک جو ہیں وہ کلونیل کلونیل پاورز کا حصہ تھے سیکنڈ ورلڈ وار کے بعد سیکنڈ ورلڈ وار نے جہاں بے تحاشا مظالم اور سختیاں لوگوں پہ ڈھائیں وہاں ایک فائدہ جو ہوا سیکنڈ ورلڈ وار کا یا ایک پازیٹیو افیکٹ جو ہوا سیکنڈ ورلڈ وار کا وہ یہ بھی تھا کہ دی کلونیل پاورز ریسیڈیڈ دیٹ دی کنٹریز دیٹ ہیڈ بین کالونائزڈ بیکیم آٹونمس اینڈ انڈیپینڈنٹ اور یہ ملک جو ہیں یہ نو آبادیات کے چنگل سے آزاد ہوئے سیکنڈ ورلڈ وار دوسری جنگ عظیم کے بعد ان میں کون کون ملک شامل ہے آپ بتائیے سب سے پہلا ظاہر ہے ہمارا ملک وی بیکیم انڈیپینڈنٹ ان نائنٹین فورٹی سیون دین آف کورس موسٹ آف دی کنٹریز ان ایفریکا الجیریا فار انسٹنس بیکیم انڈیپینڈنٹ آف کورس دین ایک اور بہت ہی بڑا جو انقلاب آیا سیکنڈ ورلڈ وار کے بعد جس میں اٹانومی اور انڈیپینڈنس حاصل کی وہ چین ہے نائنٹین فورٹی نائن چین بکیم چائنا بکیم اے سیلف رولنگ گورنمنٹ انڈر دی انفلوئنس آف دی چائنیز کمیونسٹ پارٹی ود چیئرمین ماؤز تنگ ایز دی اوور آل پریزیڈنٹ آف دا کنٹری نا آل آف دیز کنٹریز that gained their independence after the second world war are considered to be the third world countries one of the third world countries that we are referring to in today's lecture is algeria third world country psychologists in china in pakistan In Indonesia, in Africa, 
have asked themselves the question, and a very relevant question they have asked, is colonization a variable that influences people's psychology? What do you think? Kya no abadiyat? Kya ghair mulki hukmarano ka? Kisi mulk pe kabza karna or unpe hukmarani karna? Kya bisi sadime un mulkon ki? Un mulkon ke logon ki nafsiyat pe koi asar rakta hoga? Aapke khayal mein? Bilkul rakta hoga. Bilkul aisa hi hai. And that is what people, psychologists in the third world countries have discovered. We will talk about psychology in the third world countries from now onwards in two lectures. Today, we are going to touch upon a very important, a very prominent third world psychologist belonging to Algeria. Do you know where is Algeria? Do you know which continent is Algeria? Is with, in which continent is Algeria? Algeria is now an independent country and the name of the prominent psychologist, psychiatrist, as you can read Behind me and indeed on your screen is Franz Fanon. Fanon is considered one of the most important contributors to the systems of psychology coming from the third world countries, in this case, Algeria. Franz Fanon was born in 1925 and he died in 1961. He was educated in France. He was by profession a psychiatrist. Do you remember? Do you know what is who is a psychiatrist? Do you remember who? What is the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychotherapist? Wonderful. A psychiatrist is a medical doctor. So was Fanon, a medical doctor. A psychotherapist is not a medical doctor, but a trained person who treats mental diseases by psychological means and not by biological means. Fanon, Franz Fanon, the Algerian doctor, was a psychiatrist, educated in France and later migrated to, back to his country, that is Algeria, and practiced in Algeria. During his practice and his touch with his patients, he discovered that there was a tremendous growth in mental disease in the colonized Algeria. He tried to see if there was a connection between the colonization of the country, the rule of the French upon the country, and the growth in mental disease in the country. He was of the view that the mental disease that he came across in his hospital in Algeria was a direct result of the colonization of the country by the French ruler. Aap jante hain, Algeria, France ki colony raha hai. Based upon his experiences with the mentally patient, me mental patients and mentally sick people, he produced two very famous books. The first one he called Black Skin, White Mask. Black Skin, White Mask is available all over the world, even in Pakistan. It has been translated into Urdu. And it is freely available in Pakistan. You can read it when you have the time. The other book, which is a world famous book, is, was entitled Wretched of the Earth. Jiska Dibacha Johe, 
وہ اس وقت کے سب سے اہم فلاسفر میں لکھا تھا جو فرانسیسی فلاسفر تھا اور جس کی بہت ہی بڑی کانٹریبیوشن ہے ورلڈ فلاسفی میں ان اینڈ ان ورلڈ لٹریچر ہی روٹ دی پریفیس فار دس بک بائی فرانس فینون بائی دی ٹائٹل آف ریچڈ آف دی ارتھ دی نیم آف دا فلاسفر واز ایز یو مسٹ ہیو گیسٹ جان پال سارترے جو کہ بیسویں صدی کے ایگزٹینشیل فلاسفی کے بہت ہی بڑے فلاسفرس مجھے جاتے ہیں جو کہ اپنی شارٹ اسٹوریز ناولس اور ڈرامہ لکھنے کی وجہ سے بہت ہی عظیم ادیب بھی سمجھے جاتے ہیں انہوں نے اس کا دی باچا لکھا ہے اس سے ظاہر ہوا دیٹ ایک یہ بھی اس بات کا ثبوت ہے ہاؤ امپارٹنٹ دی فرینچ انٹلیکچولس دی فرینچ فلاسفرز کنسیڈرڈ دی بک اینڈ دی آئیڈیاز کنٹینڈ ان دیٹ بک اس ریفرنس میں میں ایک اور بھی آپ کو بات بتا دوں کہ اس وقت جو فرانس کے صدر تھے چارلز ڈی گول ہی واز اے جنرل بفور ہی بیکیم اے پالیٹیشین اینڈ بفور ہی بیکیم دی پریزیڈنٹ آف دا کنٹری وین ساترے واز پریزنگ فینانس ورک اینڈ واز سائڈنگ ود دی انڈیپینڈنس موومنٹ آف فینانس کنٹری وچ از الجیریا دی ریئیکشنری ایلیمنٹس ان فرانس asked de gaulle repeatedly through public platforms such as newspapers such as radio such as speeches such as television that de gaulle should arrest satre because satre was being unpatriotic by siding with the independence movement of their colony algeria And what did De Gaulle say to this? There's a very famous quote of De Gaulle regarding this demand by the reactionaries that he should arrest the philosopher Sartre. He said, he is quoted to have said, and I quote, How can I arrest Sartre? Sartre is France. So, this episode ka بتانے کا مقصد یہ تھا کہ اس وقت کے اہم ترین لوگوں میں ساترے شمار شمار کیا جاتا تھا اور اس وقت کے فرانس کے صدر کے خیال میں ساترے ریپرزینٹیڈ واز اے سمبل آف فرانس سو ہی کڈ ناٹ ہیو اریسٹیڈ ساترے بیکاز ساترے واز siding with fanon and the independence movement in algeria that is just to bring home the importance of the work of franz fanon and his idea of the colonizer's psychology let us take a look at what franz fanon had to say in his book wretched of the earth by the way wretched of the earth لاہور میں پاکستان میں بھی اویلیبل ہے یہ اردو میں بھی ٹرانسلیٹ ہو چکی ہے اور اردو میں اس کا نام افتادگان خاک ہے اگر آپ چاہیں تو مارکیٹ میں مل جائے گی ورنہ لائبریری سے نکال کے ضرور پڑھیے فینان کی دونوں کتابیں پاکستان میں اویلیبل ہیں اور دونوں کی ٹرانسلیشن اردو میں موجود ہے چلیے اب دیکھیں فینون کے آئیڈیاز کے بارے میں فینون کا خیال ہے کہ ان ممالک میں جہاں پر نو آبادیات لوگ حکومت میں آتے ہیں حکومت کرتے ہیں جہاں نو آبادیات قائم ہیں وہاں دو قسم کے لوگ دو قسم کی نفسیات پیدا ہوتی ہیں دی سائیکالوجی آف دی کالونائزر اینڈ دی سائیکالوجی آف دی کالونائزڈ 
psychology of the colonizer and the psychology of the colonized. That there are two types of people, the colonizer and the colonized. Wo shakhs jo mehkoom hai aur wo shakhs jis pe nao abadiyat mein hukumat ki ja rahi hai. Yeh do kism ki nafsiyat hume dikhai deti hai fainon ke khayal mein in the third world countries that have been colonized. Okay, let us go forward of that. And what is the further explanation of these? The colonizer regards the psychology of the colonized to be inferior. He considers the local to be inferior, to be bad, to be almost equal to an animal. The colonizer has what in Adler's point of view would be a superiority complex. He considers, the colonizer considers his own language, his own self, the color of his own skin, the color of his own eyes, the color of his hair to be superior. He considers his own language, he considers his own tradition, he considers his own art, he considers his own way of dress, he considers his own way of talk. All of these things to be superior than the people whom he has colonized. Ek to nafsiyat jo hai fainon ke khayal mein yeh hai. Third world countries mein khas taur pe wo countries jo no abadiyat ka shikar rahi ya no abadi rahi. Dusri jo nafsiyat hai fainon ke khayal mein wo yeh hai the psychology of the colonized. Those people who were who are the natives who are the locals who have been colonized. These people also suffer from the same problem and they also begin to agree with the colonizer that the colonizer's way of life, the color of his skin, the language that the colonizer uses, the color of his hair and the color of his eyes, his culture, his art, his literature is superior. His tradition, his historical interpretation is superior to the local or the art and culture and way of life of the colonized. Native log jo hain, wo inferiority complex ka shikar ho gaye aur jo foreigners hain, wo superiority complex ka izhar karte hain. Fanon then says that this is the main ingredient of psychology in the third world countries. That psychology in the third world countries can be seen as divided into two broad categories, the psychology of the colonizer and the psychology of the colonized. The colonizer is the foreign power, the colonized is the local inhabitant. As a result of this division, Fanon says there emerges a colonial mentality. Colonial mentality is a disease of the colonized. Wo log jo ghulami ka no abadiyat ka shikar hain, they suffer from colonial mentality. Colonial mentality is regarding, imagining, thinking, perceiving everything that is local to be inferior and everything that is foreign to be superior. Local language mein baat karna inferior hai, colonial mentality ke tahat or foreign language mein baat karna superior hai colonial language ke mutabik. 
کلونیل مینٹیلٹی کے مطابق لوکل ڈریس نیشنل ڈریس پہننا از انفیریئر فارن ڈریس پہننا از سپیریئر یوزنگ یوزنگ لوکل آئیڈیاز مینرزمز اینڈ اڈاپٹنگ لوکل فیسٹیولس ایون لوکل فیسٹیولس از انفیریئر اڈاپٹنگ فارن مینرزمز اینڈ اڈاپٹنگ فارن فیسٹیولس از سپیریئر اینڈ دیٹ از واٹ از پارٹ آف کلونیل مینٹیلٹی کلونیل مینٹیلٹی ان جنرل از این آئیڈیا آف سپیریارٹی اینڈ انفیریارٹی سپیریارٹی آف دا فارن انفلوئنسر دی فارن ڈامینیٹنگ پاور اینڈ دی انفیریارٹی آف دا لوکل اور لوکل کی ہر بات لوکل کا کلچر لینگویج ٹریڈیشن ہسٹری سب کی سب چیزیں جو ہیں ان کو کم تر سمجھنا اور فورن چیزوں کو فورن ٹریڈیشنز کو بیرونی خیالات کو برتر سمجھنا فینون کے خیال میں کلونیل مینٹیلٹی ہے اور کلونیل مینٹیلٹی از اے میجر سائیکولوجیکل پرابلم میجر سائیکولوجیکل ڈیزیز ان دا تھرڈ ورلڈ کنٹریز دیٹ از ون آف دی موسٹ امپارٹنٹ اینڈ پرومیننٹ فنکشنز اور مائل اسٹونز ان دی سائیکولوجی آف تھرڈ ورلڈ کنٹریز اینڈ دیٹ مائل اسٹون ہیز بین لیڈ بائی دی پرومیننٹ الجیرین سائیکیٹرسٹ فینون وین ہی پوائنٹس آؤٹ دیٹ دوز ایریاز اینڈ ریجنز دیٹ ہیو بین اوور ٹیکن بائی کلونیل پاورز گیٹ ڈیوائڈیڈ ان ٹو دی کالونائزڈ اینڈ دی کالونائزر گیونگ رائز ٹو کلونیل مینٹیلٹی فینون گوز فارورڈ آف دیٹ آلسو اینڈ ہی پٹس فارورڈ دا ویو دیٹ کلونیل مینٹیلٹی also leads to also creates also created or forwarded by the colonizer the colonizer can see colonial mentality as serving their purpose after all if the locals consider their own tradition culture way of dress language festivals way of dealing day to day life as inferior then of course that helps the colonizer to remain a dominant force in any region or third world country so the colonizer wants colonial mentality to continue and how does the colonizer do that in fanon's point of view the colonizer takes the focus away from colonial mentality and fixes the focus on conflicts within religious subsects within intergender subsects within other small issues colonial mentality leads to a rage gussa rage is brought forth as a result of what fanon has called division of the colonizer and the col- and the colonized and the rise of colonial mentality apne aap ko local cheezon ko native cheezon ko bura kehna اور بیرونی اشیاء کو بیرونی لوگوں کو اچھا کہنا ظاہر ہے اس سے غصہ تو جنم لے گا اینڈ دیٹ از واٹ فینون از سینگ دیٹ کلونیل مینٹیلٹی 
जनरेट्स रेज गुस्सा बहुत लोगों में बढ़ जाता है बट दैट रेज ही सेज इज यूज बाय द कॉलोनाइजर्स टू डाइवर्ट अटेंशन फ्रॉम द रियल कॉज ऑफ दैट रेज एंड देन द कॉलोनाइजर फिक्सिस दैट रेज ऑन ट्राइबल राइवलरीज ऑन सच इश्यूज एज लैंग्वेज एज रिलीजियस रिलीजियस डिफरेंसेज एज एथनिक डिफरेंसेज इंस्टेड ऑफ फोकसिंग दैट रेज विच इज द रियल कॉज कॉज ऑफ द रेज विच इज द कॉलोनाइजर एंड द कॉलोनाइज दैट रेज इज फिक्सड ऑन दीज लिटल थिंग्स विच आर इरेलीवेंट सच एज ट्राइबल डिफरेंसेज सच एज माइनर रिलीजियस डिफरेंसेज such as minor ethnic or cultural differences but the colonizer directs that rage into these channels and thus avoids the rage to be fixated on the real cause of the rage which is colonization the real cause therefore in fanon's point of view of a mental disease in the third world countries is the division of the country into the colonizer and the colonized into the rising of the colonial mentality which is acceptance of inferiority of the local culture and local tradition and local language giving rise to rage and when that rage is misdirected all of these complicates issues for people who have sensitive psychologies mental disease therefore is actually if result of colonial mentality and rage in fanon's point of view a novel approach isn't it and what is the therapy in fanon's point of view of this colonial mentality and this division of the country and psychology into the colonizer and the colonized and the rage that comes with it fanon saw in his psychiatric practice in his hospitals looking at his patients that those people became mentally sick who did not take part in the battle against the colonizer and who accepted the colonizer's standards and accepted their own inferiority as colonized and the superiority of the colonizer he also noted that when these people who are mentally ill started to take place in the battle to free themselves of the yoke of colonizer of the slavery of the colonizer the moment they did that they started to feel better and they came out of their mental illnesses so in fanon's point of view the way to get rid of one's mental disease is to become a part of the battle against the colonizer against the division between the colonizer and the colonized against colonial mentality to wash away colonial mentality to discover one's true roots and not to feel inferior as a result of the colonizer considering the colonized to be inferior fanon goes forward to explain the point that battle is not fought only by guns and weapons that battle is not fought only 
in the battlefield. The battles are also fought in the sports arena, in the college campuses, in the classrooms, in the theaters, in art. In fact, one's whole life is a battleground and if one wages this battle against rejecting the superiority of the colonizer and against accepting the inferiority of the local or the colonized, then one has realized the basic dynamics of one's mental disease, that is colonial mentality, and one is on the path to recovery. Interesting. Fanon had seen, he quotes a number of cases in his books, where ordinary people, like taxi drivers, ordinary people, like waiters, college teachers, school teachers, ordinary, small, menial workers in offices, people of high mentality, such as doctors and engineers, when they became sick, they had accepted without fail the colonial mentality, considering themselves superior and considering the colonizer to be inferior. And soon as they realized that this was leading to a rage in them, and that rage should be properly directed against the foreign colonizers, they were on the path to recovery and they started to feel better. And they became free of their mental symptoms. That was Fanon's methodology of treatment to turn people from considering their own selves to be inferior as compared to the selves of the colonizers. Once they turned away from there, then they were on the way to recovery from their, from their mental illnesses. Interesting approach, is it not? We will talk about some more psychology in the third world countries. We will talk about psychology in the People's Republic of China, and we will talk about psychology in Pakistan also. But for the time being, before I end today, let us recapture what we had talked about. We viewed what is the third world. Third world they are the countries or the regions that became autonomous and independent after Second World War. Those regions and countries are spread over a vast part of the globe, that is Africa, Asia, Far East, and China. Far East mein aap jante hain, Indonesia bhi colony raha hai. Aap jante hain, Asia mein Hindopak, bare sagheer jo hai, ye colony raha hai. Aap jante hain, China bhi colonial power ki yoke mein tha, aur aap jante hain, ke Africa bhi colonial powers ki yoke mein raha hai. So, third world countries are considered those countries where that became autonomous and independent after the Second World War. One of the important contributors that came from the third, one of the third world countries is, was from Algeria, a psychiatrist, Franz Fanon, who was educated in France, later on went back to his country, that is Algeria, and practiced there in, a, in um, being attached to various hospitals. Fanon's main point of view related to mental illness was, or general psychology was, that as a result of colonization, people in the country can be divided into two categories, the colonizers and the colonized. The colonizers consider themselves superior, the colonizer, the colonized consider themselves inferior. Acceptance of the local of their inferiority is what is called 
colonial mentality. Colonial mentality is accepting the colonizer's superiority and the colonized inferiority, inferiority of the colonized. And that colonial mentality leads to rage, betahasha ghussa. And that colonial mentality and rage are the basic dynamics of mental disease. That mental disease can be resolved, can be helped in Fanon's point of view. If the colonizer, if the colonized takes part in the battle to free his country and himself from the influence of the colonizer. And the battle is not only confined to the battlefield, the battle is all over colleges, schools, sports arena, home and mahallas and everywhere. That is what was the contribution of a very prominent psychiatrist from the third world country, Franz Fanon. We will talk about some other third world country psychologists. psychologists. Until that time, do look it up, do read his books. Khuda Hafiz and God be with you.